on the motion all terror suspects should be tried in civilian court instead of military court. And we have first affirmative speaker. and in civilian courts under civil laws and constitutional laws, not with military laws, where military, where military laws are heavily considered. And also if one is proven innocent from civil laws, court, they will be released. However, proven to have committed crimes will be taken into the United States prisons. First, our first contention is the transparency. Civil laws will ensure and have a better possibility of evident verdicts. In military courts, they tend to have a speedy trial. It, all, it averagely takes about three days to finish up a trial. However, in civil courts and federal courts, it took almost 30 days to pass a trial, which brings to doubts upon the transparency in military courts. Also, in military courts, jurors are not from anonymous Americans. They will be, there, there will be soldiers from the military. Here causes another problem. Those soldiers who possess hatred and animosity against those suspected terrorists prior to the trial, and they will have their own opinions about the trial, and they will then interpret into the trial. Also, I like to present that I like to mention that possibility of proving guilty in civil courts is bigger than proving guilt in military courts. Because in civil courts, you are, we will be charged with judges who have, through many trials uh, with civil laws, and those punishments can be enforced if they are proven to be guilty, and also if they are proven to be innocent. Uh, civil courts will understand and determine the fundamental principles before the suspected crimes. And our second contention is that governance, it is governance duty to uphold, uphold values and humane right, human rights. The degree is different in civil courts and military courts. In USA, everyone is everybody is innocent unless they are proven guilty. However, in military courts, it's an exceptional circumstance that everybody is guilty unless they are proven to be innocent. Having this uh, resolution passed, we will assure that there will there are we are fighting in a war on terror, yet we are keeping the human rights which uh, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights promises that everybody should be subjected to trial, not taken to, not taken to prisons without a trial. And obviously it is the government's duty to uphold values of humans. Because not, the, being a terrorist doesn't mean that they are no longer humans. They will be considered as na other nationalities civilian and they will be, uh, they will be trialed under our uh, laws because they will be suspected to be guilty. And our third contention is the effectiveness. As I was uh, keep on uh, explaining my first contention, the transparency and these humane values in my third contention, uh, in my second contention, our third contention stands out very strongly. In military, it is it is very uh, it is our responsibility to prove it is the government's responsibility to prove that some terrorists are, are guilty, and it is our duty to prove prove it among the general public because if not then if not like in military courts they will be automatically taken to, to automatically taken to the prisons without even being uh, interviewed or announced in the general public which is problematic because civilians need to be aware of what is going on with the current issues and uh, because I've explained the transparency and the effectiveness of the civil courts, and because because of different because of laws, they will be they will be uh, trial is different from civil laws and military laws. I believe the civil laws will have more transparent effect upon those detainees, upon those suspected terrorists, and also it is the government's duty to uphold values of other humans as well. And for all these reasons, I beg to propose. Thank you. 
fighting and we could battle. Yes, but war and terror is not a real war, it's just a color of so, so the war on terror is not a real war? Yes. Okay. So what if you capture someone in a raid on a terror cell in Baghdad, Iraq, is that even if he's part of militia, even if he's not a soldier, he's still fighting, he's still a combatant? Well, still, he's not a legitimate soldier, but under a certain government, they are civilians. They're, they're civilians and they're part of a militia fighting the U.S. Army. Yes, thus they... No, thus... Army? Okay, so they're civilians and they're part of a militia fighting the U.S. Army. And they capture them in a raid on a terrorist cell. Yes, then they should be subjected to trials right. in so, civil courts. So you said that, from pe that these people belong to other nationalities and they're in other countries. So what right does the U.S. have if they, if they, if civilian, civilian laws only apply within because their boundaries? If they have committed crimes or have the warrants, then we'll take them, take them to the civil courts and then trial them. So, so you would fly terrorists from all around the world, Yemen, No, um, yeah, um, only the suspected ones. All the suspected terrorists. So do you understand the economic cost involved in that? Well, one is not going to win this case. Okay, so basically, you, after you try them in civilian courts, you're going to have to take them to federal prisons, right? Yes. And federal prisons, what if they're not willing to take them? Well, As in, in the status quo, federal prisons are not willing to take terrorists. Federal, federal prisons don't have the right to deny the government's enforcement. So do you, are, are terrorists the same as average criminals? Oh yes, so average criminals. Okay, so terrorists are exactly the same as someone who might commit an act yes. of passion. So they should be tried under the civil laws, not so, military law. So a person who can take away three thousand dollars by pushing a button is the same as someone who might commit an act of passion. Yes, because they're just criminals. So what is that your perception of military courts? Military court has a lot of problems because only the commanders uh, act as a jury and they're uh, so, so you believe that there are no rights afforded in the military courts? Well, I'm not saying that there are no rights afforded in the military courts. Okay, so you're saying that there are no rights afforded in the military courts. Well, I'm not saying that there are no rights afforded in the military courts. If we can prove to you that rights are afforded in the military courts, do we win this debate? No. Okay, so uh, you, talked about, you talked about hatred and soldiers may act on hatred. Can't these soldiers be held accountable? Can't they be court martialed? Can soldiers from other nations be. No, like soldiers in those military courts. Right? You said that they may act on hatred. Yeah, yeah, yes. So can't they be court martialed? Can't they be held in court? Court Friday night criminal that would take your phone. Moreover, 
They said people will be released. We have these practic practical questions on that. Where will these people be released? Where they, will they be repatriated to their home country? Will these people be staying in the United States? And these are certain practical questions that we asked even from it over today and their policy is not still clear. However, they say that these people have hatred intrinsic within them. If these people have hated, once you make this hatred come under public scrutiny, won't they exploit this and won't they actually won't they sensitively indulge other individuals onto their own ideology? This is a certain repercussion that we see of civilian trial. Moving on, talking about the three, four lines of argument that the negative of today has. Number one, extraordinary circumstances warrant extraordinary measures. Secondly, procedures of a civilian court are not suited to handle these special and dangerous cases of suspect. Number three, sufficient due process exists in a military tri tribunal. Now, Article 1, Section 9 of the US Constitution states, in cases of public order and when national security is at threat, you can have the habeas corpus suspended. Thus, if you say that we are doing something illegal, deep affirmative is under the as 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 order and assumption. And we see states taking methods when they take away rights during times of curfew, during times of war, and during conscription. Thus, states already realize that under extraordinary circumstances, you are allowed to take extraordinary measures, which is the principle of the negative of today. Moreover, we see that these criminals require extraordinary treatment due to their inherent nature. Something that team negative of today realizes and not team affirmative. Realizing that, talking about why procedures of court can't, hard, can't handle these cases and will harm war efforts. Now, how does a civilian trial work? Information is made public, like location, details of accomplices, and operational modality used. Now, according to a US cable published by WikiLeaks, Osama bin Laden got the information that was leaked after the trial of Abdul Rahman, ladies and gentlemen. And this allowed Osama bin Laden to carry out his plans and it took 10 years to catch Osama bin Laden. This intelligence would not have been compromised if a military tribunal would have used, if this intelligence had not been leaked. Thus, in the model of the affirmative, you are compromising the war effort by having this important intelligence leak. Now the accused needs to have access to evidence. Imagine if he has access to all this certain evidence and this is leaked. For example, in the example of Malik Ishaq, they said that this evidence was not sufficient. What were, the what were the repercussions of this? He was implicated already in 45 cases. But people said this evidence is not sufficient. He was released. And what happened? He was involved in the Sri Lankan bomb attack, ladies and gentlemen. And because he, he was, and he later admitted that these, these, the antiquated took the, uh, took a view of that he had committed these acts of violence which had been made, which exploited a legal loophole that exists within civilian courts, ladies and gentlemen, that is already exploited within the model of today. Why are sufficient, why sufficient due process already exists in a military tribunal? Each detainee receives a copy of the charges against him in his native language. Some evidence that is not a threat is accessible to that certain terrorist and to these public journal, to the journalist that can arrive after undergoing sufficient public checks. So ladies and gentlemen, don't you understand that once these terrorists pose a threat to the security, you need to have checks and measures that guarantee that, these, that this important information is not leaked. And if team of permanent believes that due process does not exist, we have this, we have a comparison of Article 3 of Geneva Conventions and Article 75 of the Military Commission Act, which shows that there are judicial guarantees granted in a military tribunal. So for team affirmative to say that due process does not exist is a simple assumption because of what we have mentioned and for clear evidence that is shown in the constitution. So what has team negative showed you today? We showed you that the policy of team affirmative is not clear. We showed you that sufficient due process exists in a military tribunal and we showed you if you have civilian trials, you will be compromising the war effort. And for all those reasons and for the success of war terror, what team negative?
voting matters in your rebuttal, can you explain why this is common? Because we believe that the civilian law of a particular civilian applies will apply in his own country and not in the United States of America, as opposed to a military law of the United States that will also be applied in Afghanistan, for example. But there have been many cases that each and other, other soldiers from other countries have been on trial in the military um, course, and why does it matter then? Why is it? Why is it? Because we believe military tribunals are sufficient justice for these people. Well, they are violating... Okay, so um, in your, in your second question about how this media, uh, the information exposed by the civil courts will make the criminals to more likely to attack, right? Like, more likely to... We never said they will be more likely to attack. We said that if this information is leaked, they could be more better planning. For example, in the case of Osama bin Laden, where the intelligence of his location was leaked, he was able to relocate himself. Don't you believe that the citizens of the United States deserve to know what's happening during the war? If the United States of America do deserve to know what's happening and get bombed, we don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, they are constantly in fear. We believe that without um, information, they know. Without but we're still releasing information once we allow certain journalists after undergoing certain security measures into these military tribunals. Thus, we're allowing the right to know it as well. Okay. In your third contest, you talk about this court, military courts have this native language thing. What does that mean? It means that these people are afforded a form of habeas corpus and for the charges against them, they are given their charges in their own native language. Thus, sufficient due process is. Well, can they do that in civil courts? Uh, yes, they do. And why does it matter? Because we, can, we, can because we have already shown system. to you that there is important intelligence leak. We've shown to you the examples of the past where you have used civilian trials and there has been substantial harm. For example, in the case of Malik Shah. So you know, you agree you agree the fact that this process can be happening in the civil civil courts as well, right? No, because we believe intelligence will be leaked in civilian courts and not in military courts. This is an important distinction and thus the process that is carried out in a military court is not similar to that in a civilian court. Don't you think supporters from the cities and the app would help the government to investigate war for the security? Can you repeat that? Don't you think motivation of the citizens, like support from citizens is important? Uh, but we believe that if people are protected, they will be more likely to support the government in cases where the national security is protected, which team negative is doing and not team affirmative. Why do you need military tribunals? What were the other things that were said by Team Affirmative? 
they had three arguments. The first was transparency. And in this, they first gave you analysis, uh, an analysis of how military courts and uh, military courts take speedy trials and civilian courts, in a civilian court you took 30 days to uh, carry out the trial. Our first uh, refutation to that is well, how can you compare two different cases, for, uh, first of all, two cases are different, evidence is different, so how can you compare two different cases? On the second level, ladies and gentlemen, and this is where our positive case comes in, we believe that evidence that can be used in military, uh, uh, we believe that evidence that is present in military tribunals helps to speed up, though, even if we agree that they speed up those trials, we believe that those decisions are correct. And this is where their second analysis comes in. They said that in a military court, the soldiers form the jury and have, who have hatred and animosity towards these terrorists. And we believe that there is an internal inconsistency within their case because their second speaker came up here and she said that the civilians have watched what terrorists have done to them. So our question is, how can a civilian who has watched innocent Americans die in 9-11 for no apparent reason have no hatred and animosity towards these same terrorists? And those are the civilians which form those juries in civilian courts as well. So if the only reason why they want these military tribunals, civilian courts and not military tribunals is because there is no hatred and animosity in the jury, well that doesn't exist. On the second level, ladies and gentlemen, they said that these soldiers on the jury, our refutation to that is that if, for instance, a wrong decision is taken, you can court martial these people as well. So some sort of accountability does exist. And they have conceded to this. They said, uh, and here is, here is where the second argument comes in, and about the government's duty to uphold rights and humane values. Which values? We believe, ladies and gentlemen, our first question is which values are you talking about? And here is an interesting thing that they've been saying. That in a civilian court, these terrorists are innocent until proven guilty. And in a military court, these terrorists are innocent until proven guilty. We think that this is an inconsistency within their case. Because if you are saying that military, in a military tribunal, terrorists aren't innocent until proven guilty, then why are you having that trial in the first place? The reason why you're having that trial is because you're still working on the assumption that those terrorists are innocent in this case as well. So the, uh, the logic that they've said that in civilian courts, terrorists are innocent until proven guilty, that logic applies in military tribunals as well, which is why you're having those cases in the first place. They said that giving people, in giving these suspects rights, you need to give these suspects rights because the same, they're the same as civilians. We brought you an analysis of how they're ideologically driven uh, and are willing to die for their cause, are willing to bomb up innocent thousands of people, which differentiates them from normal criminals. So how are they the same as normal criminals? They haven't answered that. And as for the, the fact that civilians need to be aware of what is going on in their courts, well, we feel that uh, in military tribunals you allow special journalists and you, you can classify which information you want to be let out, which is why military tribunals are better because this information is protected in this case. Speedy trials. 
If you walk into the room and find your roommate hiding something in the closet really quickly, don't you think it would be suspicious? What do we eat? Even hiding drugs, alcohol. What if I do drugs? What What do we be hiding in the police staff find that person? So mil in the military course, they'll be hiding something because it, the trials take place really quickly. And in civil laws, they take trials in, in many processes to filter out benefits. Exactly. You don't hide anything in civilian courts. You let out all that information. This information has in the past been present to these terrorist networks as well. Which how, how would you promise those information will leak out? How, what? how would you promise that those information will leak out? Because the, the entire point you, of a civilian court is to make trust? everything public. Okay, pardon me? The entire point of a civilian court is to make everything available to the public. So all that information is automatically available to the public. We're not given out information about where the imminent attack will take so, place. Correct? So you're agreeing to our principle that extraordinary circumstances do warrant extraordinary measures and certain civil liberties can be infringed if there is a, a problem, if there is a reason enough to do so. Not have biased 
um, concept of this problem, and this this chosen chosen trees by the government are more likely to be biased than those trees than trees in civilian courts. And without transparency, there I have stated that there will be no checks and balances, so we cannot really see what's happening in military courts. And in the in the jurists in military courts actually are not responsible for their decision, so they so they can do anything if they want to just keep keep them in the prison forever because they are only based on the evidence and they are not responsible for their actions. So it is likely that they can be biased. They can be biased. Okay. So going to our third contention, our third main main, main class about whether suspected terrorists deserve fair trial. And the opposition talked about how their suspected suspected terrorists should not have a fair trial because there is the evidence that they might be terrorists and do not hold same rights as humans. However, we believe that we believe the idea that people all people are innocent before proven guilty, and we believe that those terrorists are not like there are many chances that those terrorists are are not guilty. So we believe that um, just just giving their rights away because their suspect is totally wrong and we can only take right people's citizens' rights away if they violate something that is harmful to the government. So we so 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 the last as the last people of this debate we believe that we have proven why this our conditions stand and their conditions fall. So we strongly urge the justice. I just have three minutes and 50 seconds left of prep time. I see you Thank you for your speeches. Good morning. So, what burden did we put on team affirmative today? We said that they have to show why terrorist suspects should be treated the same as other criminals, number one. Number two, how their policy would not compromise the war effort. And number three, why military tribunals are bad and do not afford terrorist suspects any rights. Now let's show you how Team Pakistan proved the exact opposite with four main issues. Number one, is the war on terror really a war? And we feel this speaks for itself. Number two, uh, number two, does the government's duty to uphold national security supersede the right to a civilian trial? And we believe that it does. Number three, will civilian trials harm the war effort? We believe that it will. And number four, does sufficient justice take place in military tribunals, and we believe that it does. Now we came out here in first negative and we told you that these terrorist suspects are found in active combat. We said, say that you raid a terrorist cell in Baghdad and you find them as part of a militia and they are, and you find them as part of a militia and you are fighting them. Are they, is this not reasonable evidence, ladies and gentlemen? Are they not then fighting you? If this is not a war, why is it called war on terror? Why not just effort to combat terrorism. Clearly, it is a war. And they actually came up here and they conceded that yes, only civilian law only applies to people within the United States. They conceded to this. Then we believe that yes, military law does apply to people outside the United States. Since we proved to you that these people are in the fact, they, and they came out here and said this in their policy, they are enemy combatants, ladies and gentlemen. Since they are actively fighting you, in life, you capture them in live military operations. And since they themselves conceded in their case that civilian law does not apply to them, it becomes obvious that the issue of whether they military law applies to them falls to Team Pakistan today. Now the second issue. Does the government's duty to uphold national security supersede the right to a civilian trial? Why was the state for things that we to protect its citizens? Now we hear our pragmatic side, a rational side. We understand that we cannot argue absolute morals. No rational side can argue absolute morals. Now we are all for upholding rights and values, but when a greater risk is present, certain steps need to be taken, ladies and gentlemen. If, for example, if you treat them exactly the same way as normal criminals, what differentiates this war than fighting any other average criminals? Why not stop drone strikes? Why not stop the war on terror as it is, ladies and gentlemen? What differentiates this war from any other effort to combat everyday crime, ladies and gentlemen? We believe that because of this, because no right is absolute, no right exists in a vacuum, because governments, in the case of curfews, in the case of conscriptions, do take away certain civil liberties to protect the greater population. Because of these reasons, we believe that this falls to us as well. They said military tribunals are not always going to be successful. We agree, but neither will civilian trials. Murderers go, people go wrongfully convicted as murderers several times. We don't agree that it's correct, but it does happen. They asked us to prove how military tribunals would be more accurate. Never did they prove how civilian trials would be more accurate. They just said it takes longer. They may take longer because of the backlog present in civilian trials, because civilian courts have to take care of many more cases. Number three, will civilian trials harm the war effort? We said information would be leaked, conceded by Team 
to know that they are fighting you, that they are suspicious. But this environment is not conducive to gather enough information to convict them. And because of this, people go free, ladies and gentlemen, such as Malik Ishaq, who later turned out to be the person behind the Sri Lankan bomb, uh, bomb, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the threat that Team Pakistan is not ready to bear. Number one, we ask them two classes of concerns. Where will these people go after you convict them? Federal courts have already launched, not in my backyard, operations to keep them out. Number two, what about the money? This is important, especially in the status quo. When you have a financial crisis, what about the money? It's going to take a, a, a huge sums of money to deal with them, to fly them around with two security aircrafts right next to them, ladies and gentlemen. Number four, and because we produce, will compromise this with the war effort, we believe this also falls to Team Pakistan. Number four, does sufficient justice exist in military courts? They conceded that there is some transparency. Number two, they said that soldiers would be biased. How would juries in civilian courts not be biased, ladies and gentlemen? We said soldiers can be court-martialed and there is sufficient accountability. Since we proved to you that uh, they, have, they, they, they have been principally inconsistent, since we proved to you that their policy would not be effective, since we proved to you that... Okay.